Welcome to September's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is compare version numbers. Compare two version numbers, version 1 and version 2. If version 1 is greater than version 2, return 1. If version 1 is less than version 2, return negative 1. Otherwise, if they're equal to one another, return 0. You may assume the version strings, so their strings, are going to be non-empty, and they contain only digits and the period. The period character does not represent a decimal point, rather, it is used to separate the number sequences. So unfortunately, we're not going to just be able to convert our string into a float and compare them. We will have to compare, just like how in like Python packages, how they can have multiple periods. So 1.01 .01 is greater than version 1, so we're going to return 1 here. Uh, version 7.5.2.4 is less than 7.5.3, so we return negative 1. Now, one little caveat is leading zeros don't count. So here, 1.01 .01 and 1.001 are actually the same version number. And that makes sense. All right, so how do we do this? Well, we already know that we can't just convert the whole string into a, a float or a number because there's going to be possibly multiple periods, right? So what we're going to have to do then is compare each one of these mm, elements inside of our number uh, separated by periods. But the problem here is that they might have different amounts. So that makes it a little bit tricky. Um, but we'll just we'll just put in some sort of statement there to make sure that we could account for that. So let's start by using the split method and creating a list of integers, or rather they're going to be strings at first, um, of all these numbers that exist inside version 1 and version 2. So I'll call it v1 and we'll say version 1 will split it by the period. And we'll do the same thing for version 2, split it by period. Now, um, we need to get the max length between these two because we want to check for every single element inside here, right? And we want to make sure that we check every single one. Uh, one of them might have less than the other, so we need to get the maximum. So to do that, I'll just get the length of v1 as well as the length of v2. What we're going to do here is do a for loop, but check i in range of the maximum between these two. So the max between n1 and n2. All right, so here's where I'm going to take our number. I'm going to convert it to an integer and then compare the two. So we'll call it n1 for version 1. In the very first part, we'll take the first element there, right? So this is just going to be the... Uh, v1 i and we'll convert it to an int but hold on what if this doesn't exist because we might be on like number three and version one doesn't have the index number three or say two here uh, so that should always be a zero then so there's a couple ways to account for that you could either add more zeros to our list uh, that's one way to make sure that, that they're aligned or we can just have an if statement here and say uh, make n1 equal to 0 if we're greater than our length of n1, right? So to do that, I'm just going to use a, uh, how would it look? It would be like if, let's say, i is greater or equal to our n1, then we're going to make n1 equal to 0, right? Otherwise, it's going to look like this. Uh, and we can make this a ternary, sta ternary statement in Python, make it a one-liner. So we'll say, hey, n1 equals 0 if it's greater than the length, otherwise make it equal to uh, whatever value is inside of v1 element i. And we'll do the same thing for n2 here. We'll say, hey, if it's greater than n2, make it 0, otherwise this. So all we do now is just check, all right, if n1 is greater than n2, we return, what was it? 1, I believe, right? Um, yep. And Otherwise, we return negative 1. But no, not otherwise. It's other. It's else if n1 is less than n2, then we return negative 1. But if they're equal to one another, then we have to continue the loop and check to see the other elements to make sure that uh, one or the other is bigger. It's only when we get through this entire loop and we've been able to check to make sure that every single element is equal to one another, then we can return a 0 instead. So let's make sure this runs. Um, look, oops, list index out of range. Let's see what did I mess up here? And went to. Ah. 
little typos there too so that should work it looks like negative one so let's submit that and accept it and that's it so it's pretty straightforward uh, just a couple little tricky things here and there uh, but overall it's a pretty straightforward problem uh, time complexity wise it would be o of n assuming that n is the number of the max number of elements inside of our string all right so that's it thanks for watching my channel and remember do not trust me, I know nothing.